Hi everyone, I'm River. One night, my mom came into my room. Pack your bags, we need to move out of this house right now, she said. When I said, again? She replied, River, come on, get to it now. If we don't move out ASAP, you will have to come visit your parents in prison. This happens pretty regularly. My parents start a new business. After a while, they always mess it up. They either rip off their customers or borrow money from a bunch of people that they never pay back. We grab all our stuff, throw it into a truck, and move to another state before people come banging on our door. For example, last year they opened a dog hotel. People would leave their dogs there while traveling. When someone would bring in an expensive dog, like a Tibetan Mastiff or a Chow Chow, my dad would sell it online. You heard that right, my dad was selling other people's dogs. When the owners came to pick them up, he would lie and tell them their dog was either dead or had run away. When social media blew up with this, we packed up and left. Once, they opened up a second-hand clothing store in a small town. The business was great. It turned out that once a week, my mom was going to another town nearby. She was paying some kids there to steal clothes that people hung up in their backyards. You guessed it, right? Those were the clothes my mom was selling in the store. When one of the kids got caught and ratted her out, my parents were exposed. As always, we skipped town and moved to yet another state. It pains me to say this, but unfortunately, my parents are crooks, and both of them have the exact same personality, so they get along really well. They are always trying to cut corners with every new venture they start. That's why they end up doing illegal stuff. What's worse is that they can never make real money, so we're always broke. In two years, I'll be graduating high school. I need money to be able to afford a good college. When I talked to my parents about it, my dad said, Forget about college. You'll start working with us when you finish high school. I said, Dad, I don't think what you're doing is right. I'm not going to be like you guys. And he got really mad at me. My mom screamed, You don't like what we do? Then you're moving out the moment you're done with school. Good luck taking care of yourself. My dad took it even further, saying, Your mom's absolutely right, and we won't be taking care of you until then either. You better start looking for a job tomorrow. I'm never going to be like you. I will be an honest person and make money the right way. I yelled back and left. That night, I looked at job postings for hours. I applied for jobs that seemed like a good fit for me. In a couple of days, I started working at the reception desk of a small hotel. I went to work every day after school. One night when I got back from work, I saw a homeless man in front of our building. Normally, there are no homeless people in our neighborhood. He was staring at me. Can I help you, sir? Are you looking for someone? I asked. He said, is your name River? I did not expect that. Yes, how did you know that? I said, River, I recognize you from photos. I'm your grandfather, he said. Naturally, I was shocked. At first, I wasn't sure if he was lying or not, but after talking to him for a while, I was convinced that he really was my grandfather. He was my dad's dad. They'd been estranged for 20 years. My dad had told me his parents had died. Apparently, he had been lying about his dad. I gave my grandfather a hug. I'm sure my dad will be so happy to see you. Come on, let's go to our house, I said. But my grandfather didn't want to go there unannounced. I don't know how they will react. Will you go and ask them first? I really miss my son and my daughter-in-law. I'm here to make peace with them. I'd appreciate it if they would see me. I ran home. I told my parents that my grandfather was downstairs and told them everything we'd just talked about. Their expressions changed. My dad asked, Are you sure it's him? How did he find us? It's definitely him. He misses you both so much. Let's go down and bring him up here, I replied. My parents looked at each other anxiously. My mom snapped, You think we'll just let a homeless guy come into our house? Go and tell him that we don't want to see him. I couldn't believe it. I was about to argue with them, but my dad hushed me. Streets are where he belongs. Tell that homeless man if he comes here again, I'll make him regret it, he yelled. I went downstairs in tears. There was nothing I could do. I told my grandfather what my parents had told me. He said sadly, Really? I wasn't expecting this at all. I thought they would actually like to see me after 20 years. It started raining. I held my grandfather's arm. Forget about them. Let's get you a place to stay. I won't leave you here in the streets, I said. I took my grandfather to the hotel where I was working. I told the night manager about the situation. I asked him to deduct the cost of my grandfather's room from my salary. Uh Then I put him up in a nice room. What happened between you and my parents? Why haven't you seen each other in 20 years? I asked. My grandfather started telling me the story. I used to own a big jewelry store. When your parents got married, I gave both of them jobs there. They were sales associates. I told them, get some experience first, then I'll make you partners. But they wanted to do their own thing. One night, they came to the store and stole all the jewelry. When I came to the store the next morning and saw that there was nothing left, I was in shock. I checked the footage from the security cameras and I saw that the thieves were my son and my daughter-in-law. 
I didn't go to the police because I didn't want them to end up in prison. I went bankrupt overnight. I started living on the streets because I lost everything. This story made me so sad. Unfortunately, these were the kinds of things you could expect from my parents. They don't want to see you because they feel guilty. Maybe they're afraid you want revenge, I suggested. My grandfather said, Maybe, but I came here to make peace with them. I'm still happy to be here because I found out what a wonderful granddaughter I have and gave me a hug. The next day, I stopped at a bakery. I got a little <laughs> cake and a single candle. It was my birthday. I was going to celebrate it with my grandfather. But when I arrived at the hotel, they told me he had left really early. I was so sad that he left without saying goodbye. During my shift, all I could think about was why he did this. After I finished working, I was walking to the bus stop. A luxury car stopped right next to me. When the passenger window rolled down, I was surprised to see my grandfather inside. My dear granddaughter, happy birthday. Do you want to come for a ride with me? He said. I hopped in. The last time I saw my grandfather, he was a homeless man. Now he looked rich. He said, I realize all this took you by surprise. I'll tell you everything. But first, allow me to give you a little birthday present. I found you and your family with help from private detectives. Thanks to their reports, I know it's your birthday today. After a short ride, we arrived at the airport. We drove straight to a runway. We got out of the car. There was a private jet right in front of us. The pilot and the crew were waiting. My grandfather said, Happy birthday, River. Please accept this gift. And I screamed, What? Grandpa, are you giving me a plane for my birthday? Are you rich? My grandfather <laughs> patted me on the head. After your parents stole all the jewelry from my store, I really did go bankrupt and was homeless for two years. But I still knew the jewelry business quite well. An old friend of mine saved me from the streets and hired me as a consultant. I was traveling to Africa to buy diamonds straight from the mines. Eventually, I bought some shares in a mine. The investment paid off, and now I own five different diamond mines around the world. Everything was illuminated as my grandfather was telling me his story. But there was one more thing I was still curious about. Grandpa, why did you introduce yourself as a homeless man? If you had said you were rich, my parents would have definitely wanted to see you, I said. That's exactly why I didn't tell them. I've been diagnosed with cancer. Doctors say I barely have a year left. That's why I came to visit you all. I wanted them to know that I'd forgiven them. I just wanted them to tell me they regretted what they'd done. I was going to leave everything to them, but I had to test them to see if they were being sincere. That's why I hid the fact that I was a billionaire and pretended to be homeless. Unfortunately, they didn't want to see me. That's how I knew they hadn't changed at all. Therefore, I'm going to leave everything to my kind-hearted granddaughter. I only have one condition, though. You will not be giving your parents a single penny, because they don't deserve it. They need to be punished for what they've done. We got into the car again. When we arrived at our building, my grandfather said, Will you please go tell your parents a billionaire wants to see them? I'm sure they'll come running. I went home and told my parents what had happened. They were stunned. Just like my grandfather had guessed, they practically ran downstairs. My grandfather was waiting in front of the building. My dad said, Daddy, you got us wrong. We love you so much. Please forgive us. My mom was shedding crocodile tears and saying, River is still so young. She can't take on this responsibility. I beg you to forgive us. Leave your inheritance to your family. But my grandfather had made up his mind. It's too late to talk about all this now. I gave you a chance, but I saw that neither of you had changed. I won't let you near my money. My mom tried a different strategy by turning to me. What do you think, River? Your grandfather is not being fair, right? Will you please tell him you are on our side? She said. But I agreed with my grandfather. I'm sorry, Mom. I wish you'd taken in that homeless man and apologized for what you did all those years ago. Then it would have all been fine, I replied. My dad got really mad. So ungrateful. We've been taking care of you for free for years. If you two are conspiring against us, then we are disowning you, he screamed. My mom was with my dad on this one, too. Do whatever you want. You're not our daughter anymore, she said. They turned their backs to us and went into the building. I was literally disowned, but I wasn't sad at all. They were already going to kick me out when I turned 18. I just had to leave home a little earlier. My grandfather smiled at me and said, Do you want to check out your new plane? We could celebrate your birthday with a nice dinner in Paris if you'd like, he said. I nodded. Since I was a billionaire now, I had to get used to my new life. Hi everyone, I'm Lucia. One morning, the whole school got together outside. No one was in class, not even the teachers. Everyone was watching the road, but the person we were waiting for arrived by air. A huge helicopter landed on an empty lot next to the school. 
Two bodyguards, one male and one female, came out first, followed by a girl our age. It was Sophia, the president's daughter. She walked to the school flanked by her bodyguards. The principal was waiting for her on a platform. The bodyguards had to cut through the crowd to make way for her. All the kids wanted to touch the president's daughter. Sophia went up to stand with the principal. She greeted us with a fake smile. Everyone, the students and the teachers were applauding. The male bodyguard leaned into the mic. He said tersely, those of you who want to take a selfie with Sophia form a line. You need to keep your distance and stay at least three feet away from her. If you break this rule, you will regret it. For me, this was incredibly rude, but nobody else seemed to care. People formed a long selfie line in a second. We were really surprised when we found out that the president's daughter was transferring to our school. She had been attending a prestigious private school. We live in a small country in South America. Security is an issue here. Why did Sophia change schools? Wasn't it too risky for her to go to a regular public school? After the madness was over, I thought I could go to my class. Just as I was walking past Sophia, our eyes met. She was surprised that I wasn't joining the selfie line. With a smirk on her face, she said, hey, I can make an exception for you if you want to selfie with me. Thanks, but this selfie business is ridiculous, I replied. My answer annoyed her. I kept walking before she could say anything. I had no idea I had just made the biggest enemy of my life. The next morning, I was in for a surprise. Sophia's bodyguards were outside the classroom, searching everyone trying to go inside. So the president's daughter was in my class. When the female bodyguard told me to raise my arms, I blurted out, you could be more polite. Stop telling me how to do my job, she growled. Just as she was letting me through, Sophia yelled from inside the classroom, search her again. She looks suspicious to me. When the bodyguard began patting me down again, I was so annoyed. I walked up to Sophia and said, who do you think you are? She gave me a condescending look and said, I'm the president's daughter. Who are you? When the teacher walked in, I couldn't go on. That was our first fight with Sophia. The whole class, the teacher, was looking only at Sophia. And everyone else was staring at her too. But she was only interested in her phone. When she got up and took a selfie, I thought the teacher would definitely say something. If this had been a regular student, she would have sent her to the principal's office right away. Instead, the teacher said, I follow you on Instagram. Maybe you could do a favor for your teacher and follow me back? It was so <laughs> pathetic. No wonder she was acting like a spoiled brat when everyone around her was spoiling her. Between classes, all the students were coming to talk to Sophia. I was the only one keeping my distance. She was aware of this and didn't like it at all. Wasn't she satisfied with all the attention she was getting from hundreds of people around her? Why did she want my attention as well? I really did not understand it. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. Thanks so much. <laughs> the more I tried to steer clear of Sophia, the more I ran into her. At the cafeteria, just when it was my turn to get lunch, she stepped right in front of me with her two bodyguards. There's a line here, I screamed. Sophia didn't even turn to look. The male bodyguard said, the line is for people like you. This girl and her bodyguards were the most obnoxious people. That day we were having pizza for lunch. When I looked up for my food, our eyes met again. Sophia was staring at me. She was sitting with her female bodyguard. The bodyguard took a bite out of Sophia's pizza slice. Then she sat still for a while as if she was enjoying the pizza. I thought, why is she eating Sophia's pizza instead of getting some for herself? I figured it out when she said to Sophia, it's all right, ma'am, you can eat it. The bodyguard was making sure the pizza wasn't poisoned. If she didn't get sick, then she'd let Sophia have the rest. Life as we knew it ended after Sophia came to our school. But for some reason, I was the only person that seemed to be bothered by this. For example, the guards would rush into a restroom full of students and scream, everyone out, everyone out now. And people would leave without saying a word. Once while I was inside one of the stalls, someone started banging on the door. I figured it must be the bodyguards trying to get everyone out. This was the perfect opportunity for me. I could let everyone know what we were going through. I took out my phone and started recording. What's wrong? I screamed. The bodyguard said, Miss Sophia needs to use the bathroom. Get out now. These toilets are not good enough for Miss Sophia's butt because they're not gold plated, I replied. The guard got really mad and kicked down my door. Normally I would have been scared, but I was happy because I was recording everything. I smiled at the broken door and walked out saying, oh, I was just about to leave. Thank you for opening the door for me. When I went home that night, I uploaded my video to TikTok. Pretty soon it went viral. It got so many views. The whole country uh -huh. learned about the trouble the president's daughter was causing at our school. I was so happy to be the person they heard it from.
When I went to school on Monday, I was hoping Sophia would act somewhat differently. I walked into the classroom and Sophia stood up. In a commanding voice, she said, come with me. So I followed her out. I knew that something was going on because the bodyguards were giggling as they followed us. Sophia brought me to the restroom. We went in. There was a sign on the door of the first stall which said, attention, no entry, private property. (gasps) Sophia opened the door. Inside was a shiny golden (laughs) toilet. Sophia said with a smirk, you said gold plated toilet, but I thought I'd get a solid gold one instead. Thanks for giving me the idea. I said, you're out of your mind and left. Unfortunately, my biggest enemy was the president's daughter, and it was impossible for me to compete with her. Sophia was obsessed with me and showing how much she hated me every chance she got. I was so overwhelmed that I wanted to change schools. My heart would start pounding as I was coming to school in the morning. I would think, I wonder what Sophia will do to me today. One day, I came to school in a bad mood again. I noticed that the guards who were searching us every morning were gone. (gasps) Yay, Sophia's not at school today, I thought. I hopped inside, but Sophia was there in class. I was surprised. Normally, she'd always be surrounded by people. Many people, in fact. But now she was alone. There was a guy who tried to hang out with her all the time. I walked up to him. Marco, what's going on? I asked. He said, oh, haven't you heard? And I said, no, I didn't hear anything. What is it? He started telling me the story. The president was arrested last night. He was implicated in a multi-billion dollar corruption scandal. Apparently, federal inspectors had been collecting evidence for a long time. The gold toilet in our school restroom was on TV. That counted as evidence as well. The news said it cost $250,000. Marco stopped. He glanced at Sophia. He raised his voice just enough for her to hear us. Can you imagine? Our president's dear daughter was relieving herself into a toilet that cost $250,000. Oh, sorry. I meant our ex-president's daughter, he said and let out a laugh. Sophia heard him all right. She put her head down and started crying. Normally, Marco would try to suck up to Sophia and ask her things like, Can I get you some coffee? Do you want me to give you a shoulder massage? Now, he was trying to hurt her instead. It was really obvious why. Because Sophia's reign was over. Sophia looked pretty sad. I couldn't help myself. I went over to her. Look, your dad might have done something bad, but you're not responsible for it. You need to let it go, I offered. She looked at me. I asked my dad to get me that gold toilet. I was so mad after watching your TikTok video. I had to get back at you somehow. I thought about having a gold toilet and told my dad. He got it me right away. Now that same gold toilet is the most important piece of evidence against him. I'm the reason this happened to him. That's why I hate myself, she said. I said to her, let's go get something to drink. As usual, there was a line at the cafeteria. We got to the end of the line. The girl in front of us said, Wow, look, if it isn't the princess with the gold (gasps) toilet. I thought you never waited in line. What happened? Is your father not the president anymore? Of course she knew about what had happened. Sophia had nothing to say to that. She looked away. We got some juice and sat down at a table. I said, you know what? Until this morning, you were my worst enemy, but I don't feel that way anymore. Sophia asked why. Because now I understand that Sophia was not my worst enemy. It was the president's daughter. You're not the president's daughter anymore. So you're not my enemy. And I think the president's daughter was your enemy too. I'm sure from now on, you will have a happier life as just Sophia. She looked at me. You're right. Thank you for showing me this. Yesterday, I had hundreds of people around me, but you weren't one of them. Today, nobody wants to be near me except you. This is the biggest lesson of my life, but it's too late for regret. I have to live with this shame for the rest of my life. That was my last conversation with Sophia because she never came back to school again. Word was that she moved to another country with her mom. Her dad, the president, was prosecuted and found guilty. This incident is officially known as the gold toilet scandal. It's so weird that I was a part of this historical event since without me, that toilet wouldn't have existed. I'm Devin. The weirdest thing happened to me last month. My twin sister, Brianna, barged into my room and said, You might fool everyone, but you can't fool me. You're not my twin sister. Who are you? Why are you acting like my sister? I stared at her, trying to see if she was joking. She looked dead serious. I said, Brianna, are you okay? We're identical twins. We look exactly the same. Even dad sometimes can't tell us apart. (laughs) We're twins whether you like it or not. Brianna didn't seem to hear me. She said, look at you, still lying. 
but you can't fool me anymore. You're not my sister and I'm going to prove it. Everyone will know you're an imposter and left. I was dumbfounded. Why would Brianna do something like that? No matter how much I thought about it, I couldn't come up with an explanation. It was true that we hadn't been on good terms for a few weeks. We had fought over something silly. When that happens, we usually stay away from each other. We even eat dinner at different times. Like all other siblings, there are times when we don't talk to each other, but this time it had gone on for too long. Still, it didn't make any sense for her to come and tell me, you're not my twin and I'm going to prove it. To be honest, Brianna is not only my twin sister, she's also my best friend. It actually makes sense because since we were identical twins, both our faces and our personalities are exactly alike. For me, this is nothing short of a miracle, and I always think I'm really lucky. But now my sister, who is always telling me how much she loved me, was acting as if I was her worst enemy. My mom was also aware that we weren't getting along. There's a burger place that we always go to. She took us there. She said, girls, I think this has gone too far. It's time to end whatever this is, trying to get us to make up. But Brianna wasn't interested. The whole dinner, she didn't say a word and just stared at me. It really freaked me out. When I woke up the next morning, I saw two pieces of paper on the floor. Someone must have slid them under the door while I was sleeping. I couldn't believe my eyes when I read what was written on them. One said, who are you? And the other, where is the real Devin? I ran to my mom and showed her the notes. Naturally, she didn't get it. What are these? She asked. I said, Brianna has been telling me weird things like, you're not my sister, why are you acting like you are? And she slid these under my door last night. Mom, she's scaring me. (laughs) My mom laughed. She said, oh, Devin, all Brianna wants to do is scare you. You girls are exactly the same, but your sister has always been a step ahead when it comes to creativity. See, she still knows how to be creative, even in a fight. I knew Brianna was doing all this to scare me. I was really annoyed because she had actually succeeded. That night, dad called both of us. Your mom told me you two are having some issues. We're putting an end to this. I signed both of you up for summer camp. You will remember how much you like each other after living together in a tent for two weeks, he said. Both Brianna and I protested, but dad wouldn't listen. This is not your decision. Your mom and I already made the call. We're going there first thing in the morning. Pack your bags, he said. Before I continue with my story, I just want to make a quick reminder. If you're enjoying this video, please click the like button now and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. This way you'll be notified when new videos drop. Thanks so much. Now, back to the story. The following day, we drove 50 miles to get to the camp, which was in a national park. To be honest, this was the perfect (laughs) summer camp for high schoolers like us. Normally, we would have both jumped at the offer, but this was not a good time because we literally hated each other. They showed us to our tent. Brianna dropped off her bag and started going out. Where are you going? I asked. I'm going to look for a place to stay. Do you think I'm that stupid? I'll never stay in the same tent as you, she said. Brianna, please cut this. You're not my twin nonsense. You're scaring me, I said. She looked at me like she was surprised. I'm the one who needs to be scared. I'm with an imposter who's saying she's my twin sister. If I tell my parents, they'll think I'm crazy. That's why I need proof and I'm going to get it. I couldn't believe my ears. She still wouldn't drop this stupid game. I was furious. Find yourself a place to stay then. I don't want to see you again until this thing's over. I screamed. She left without a word. I was so mad, I started crying. And I couldn't help but wonder, why is she doing this to me? Suddenly, I had an idea. I could find out exactly what Brianna was thinking and why she was acting like this from her journal. We both started keeping journals in elementary school. After a while, I gave up. But Brianna wrote in hers every day. Sometimes she would bring her journal to my room, flip to a random page and start reading. Then we would talk about that day. I knew that she was writing down every single detail of her day. I was so anxious as I opened Brianna's bag. I was right. She had brought her journal with her. I was sweating bullets. She could come in any second. I opened it and started reading. I was once again convinced that that thing is not Devin. It's imitating Devin. It looks like her, acts like her, but it can't fool me because I know my sister better than it does. It's trying to laugh like Devin, but it can't. Devin squints as she laughs. That thing can't do it. Every time it laughs, I can tell that it's not Devin. Oh my God, what was she saying? She was seriously thinking I wasn't her real twin sister. She was calling me 
That thing! My ear started ringing. I felt so weak that I almost collapsed. At that moment, Brianna walked in. She saw me holding her journal. She leapt and grabbed it from my hand. It's all here! You can't even guess what's going to happen to you once I prove you're not Devin. You think you can fool me, but you're wrong. Where's Devin? Give me my sister back now! I was speechless. I managed to mumble something like, Brianna, I love you more than anything in the world, and ran out. I had no idea what made Brianna believe in something so crazy, but I was sure I wouldn't be able to convince her otherwise. I had to tell my parents about all of this right away. When I called them up and started telling them, they first thought Brianna had been teasing me. They even <laughs> laughed. But when I started crying my heart out as I was telling the things I'd read in her journal, they realized this was serious. Nothing I'd told them made any sense, but they started getting worried. They drove to the camp. Dad said, Devin, you wait here. We'll go for a walk with Brianna. When they returned, they looked so upset. Apparently, Brianna had told them, too, that I wasn't the real Devin. Brianna kept saying, I knew you wouldn't believe me, but you will both apologize to me when you figure out this thing is not Devin. We got in the car. Everyone was quiet the whole ride home. The next morning, my parents took Brianna to a psychiatrist. I was so anxious as I waited for them to come back. We figured that Brianna must have had some kind of a mental disorder, but what was it? Why did she think I wasn't the real Devin? I was so curious to understand what was going on inside my sister's head. When they returned, both my parents looked really sad. My mom had been crying nonstop on the way back and she could barely talk. After a while, my dad came to my room and told me what the doctor had said. Now I'm going to tell you what my dad told me and everything I found out about this on the internet. You might not believe what I'm about to tell you, but unfortunately, all of it is 100% true. According to the doctor, Brianna has a rare psychiatric disorder. It's known as the imposter syndrome. For those of you who want to look it up, the medical term for it is caprice delusion. People who have this disorder believe that a loved one has been kidnapped and replaced by an identical imposter who's impersonating them. That's right. This is why Brianna thought I wasn't her twin sister. She believed somebody had kidnapped and replaced me with a lookalike. According to her, I'm not the real Devin. The real Devin is being held hostage in some unknown location. The person who's here is an imposter who looks just like her. I realize that all of this is hard to believe. It sounds really out there, but it is a real medical condition. You might be thinking, who do these people think their loved one is abducted by? The most common response is aliens. The cause of this syndrome is still unknown, but for whatever reason, it's more common in women. I read about a bunch of cases online. All of them were about female patients. For instance, a woman believed that her husband had been kidnapped and replaced by an imposter. In another case, a woman was convinced that it was her dog that had been abducted and replaced. Of course, I feel awful for Brianna. There's something about this that makes me even more sad. People with this disorder believe it is the person they love the most that has been kidnapped. According to one theory, they are so afraid of losing that person that the brain reacts in this way. This means that my poor sister might have developed this disorder because she loves me too much. Is this a treatable condition? Unfortunately, no. Talk therapy works to some extent, but in order to see any results, Brianna has to be in therapy for years. I'm still very hopeful. I'll do everything I can for Brianna to recover from this, and one day I'll make her believe that I'm the real Devin.